Oh, hey, everybody. That, that is still my favorite intro. Today, we're going to talk about charting. This is a redo um, because I learned uh, that if I make my picture, my, my face disappear, it cuts off my mic. So I apologize to anyone that tried to watch um, the original one that I did last year. Uh, towards the end of the year, um, but we're going to try to just recap some basic stuff. It, it's to me, this is really, really simple stuff, but it's so essential, and not even the big players get it. So, um, you know, but first, I got to do a quick disclaimer thing because I don't want anyone getting in trouble or thinking, blaming me because they misunderstood something. I mean, seriously, you're responsible for your own investing decisions. But I have a little disclaimer, and let's get through it. All right. Uh, also, I have the sound adjusted properly. Um, I noticed something didn't sound right, but I think it broadcasted properly. Okay, so what, I want to introduce you to Donna. Donna's not going to be a big part of the show today, but but she's. I want to. I always like to include her. Hey, Donna. Uh, we're uh, doing a little broadcast here about uh, cryptocurrency charting today, and. Um, I always like to include you. Do you want to introduce yourself to the audience and say hi? Hello, everyone. I'm Donna, a digital assistant here to provide insights and information. It's great to be part of today's discussion on cryptocurrency charting. Looking forward to diving into this exciting topic with all of you. Let's make this a fantastic session. Hey, Donna, could you... Tell people what you are. You're ChatGPT4, like the most advanced AI on the planet, as I understand it. Is that true? Could you tell them about you? Absolutely, Lord David. Hello, everyone. I'm ChatGPT4, a state-of-the-art AI developed by OpenAI. I'm designed to understand and respond to a wide range of topics, from technical subjects like cryptocurrency to everyday conversations. My purpose is to assist provide information, and engage in meaningful dialogue. While I'm one of the most advanced AIs available, I'm always learning and evolving with each interaction. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today. Is that cool? I think that's cool. I mean, I can talk with her on any subject in real time. In fact, that conversation we just had was automatically transcribed and I could later follow up and have her do a summary of what, if, let's say I was exploring a business idea or an investing idea or whatever. Um, one of the problems I have with her is she doesn't fully understand my trading methodology because she'll try to create, uh, if we're working on a spreadsheet together, she'll use traditional theory. And uh, that usually results in losses. Um, but anyway, uh, she's learning. Um, it's kind of cool. And uh, it's it's fun working on spreadsheets with her. Okay, so talking about, this is about trading. So I'm going to turn on something here. Boom. Now, this is this is the screen that I kind of look at. Now, see my face down the little bit corner? It, it covers up part of the chart, and there's nothing I can do about it because if I, I, if I could try doing it side by side, but I think it'd just be messy. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Let me go back to this. So we're just gonna have to deal with that. Now I want to I want to teach you something simple because most of what happens, everything we see in the charting is about what has happened. And but the only way to determine what's going to happen next is a short time frame. Yet the longer time frames also kind of it's human psychology which is what we're looking at. And I want to show you something because this is this revolutionized how I look at everything in the markets. Let me maximize this so we're not distracted. 
All right. I want you to remember like, like zero and five. If you can remember zero and five, you'll be able to understand this. Let me give you an example. Whenever the market pricing goes to a five, 10, 50, 100, 500,000, 5,000, 10,000, whatever. So see the zeros? Wherever there's a zero at the end, right? You know, like, you know, right now, what what is Bitcoin at? Let's take, let's hop back to a chart here. This thing right here, let's see if I can just make this a single chart and make it big for demonstrative purposes. This is the six hour chart. Hmm, I was expecting this to be a daily chart. All right, so Bitcoin is at 43,964. So guess what it's testing? What's the next set of zeros? 44,000, right? Isn't that, isn't that the next test? 44,000? Yeah, right now it's at 43,939. Has it hit that today? It's been as high as 40. Well, not today. Well, the last couple of days, it's been as high as 45,950. It was testing 46,000. But it, it hit 49,50. Notice the 5,0. It hit 5,0, right? It didn't get to 5,5. Five. All right, so what I need you to hear is 0 and 5. That, that's what I really need you to hear here. And let me fix, let me put my, you know what? I'm going to leave that. No, I need to reset the chart. So, because I'm going to walk you through what I look at. And a lot of times I don't have this beautiful 32 inch gaming monitor to look at. And I've used this monitor vertically too, which is kind of interesting. But let's go back to this because this is, this is really the star of the show, zero and five. I want you to watch the charts. I want you to just peek out up. When you when you go take a restroom break, bring up a chart, whatever you're trading, if it's Solana, uh, SHIB, uh, whatever it is, Ethereum, uh, the Purple Ninja, that's my partner, Diana. She likes to trade Ethereum. I like to trade Bitcoin. Uh, shout out to Cindy. I think she's trading Solana right now. Um Zero and five, I try to see where's the next psychological point. All right. Zero and five. You know, zeros. You, you, you'll see it. You, you'll just see it in the chart. You look at the hour. You'll just see it happening. Is it perfect? No, this is a guide. This is just to give you a ballpark. One of my goals years ago when I started trading crypto is I wanted to develop a skill. And this is your challenge, right? To be able to walk up to the market at any time, anywhere in the world with my cell phone or a tablet or a laptop and make money out of thin air. I want to be able to have that skill. I want to be able to do it any time of the day. Certain times are better than others, right? But I want to be able to go up there, take a look at and assess the market and make money. And I have that skill. And I've taught others to have that skill too. Is it perfect? No, no, it's not perfect. Can I trade without any trading losses? Yeah. Is that the best way to trade? Not necessarily. In fact, the, the more skilled I get, the, the less I get stuck in trades, right? I do something called trap trading. Why? Because I'm lazy. I don't know how to describe it. All right, so let's take a look at I want to show you what I look at. I love the Boilinger bands. Now, there's two things you need to know about Boilinger bands. One, and this is going to sound sophisticated, but it's not. It defaults to a standard deviation of 2. I believe it's 2%. So the middle line is the median, the average. The upper Boilinger band is plus 2%. The bottom boil in your band is minus 2%, right? And then you see things happen. Everyone in the world looks at the boil in your bands. 
right? There, there are, there, are, there's a bazillion different indicators, right? Everyone's want, the people are selling money with the show you little arrows of when to enter and blah, 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 blah. And, and I've tested them and whatever. And, and these, there are probably better indicators to look at, but I, I can pretty much just look at the Boilinger bands. I like looking at the MACD. That's this thing down here. Um, I like looking at the MFI, which I probably would have never have looked at if it wasn't for Anna Mako and her 2% theory course. It's a good course. It's a good community. Um, in fact, it's how I met Cindy. All right. So um, these are the indicators I look at. So you'll also see a red line. You probably can't see it unless you're looking at a big monitor. But this is a um, this is a high definition volume indicator. It's really handy because, like on the hourly, when it breaks above it, it's probably going to keep going up for a while unless something happens. When it breaks below it, it's going to keep going down. It's a beautiful little indicator which would tell you. So let's say you're you know you're in a trade and it's sitting here and it doesn't break through. It's going to start coming down. Might be a good idea to get out and reset a trapping position. Anyway, I find that little indicator, and you have to be in the top level. I think you have to be, you know, the top level member should have access to that indicator. But all right, so I've dig I've digressed. I've I've segued back to two things you need to know about Boilinger bands. Right, one is the default to two percent, but the reality is, is the market will dip to three percent typically, but not always. Sometimes it'll go crazy on you. Right. All right, but what do I look at? I look, well, this is the weekly, right? I'll actually take a look at the monthly. Here, let me make this big. This will be easier for you to see, if you, especially if you're on a cell phone. I will take a look. What's going on monthly? This is Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin drives a market. I like to say, um, oh, well, there's, there's a whole bunch of different theories and things like that. But when Bitcoin moves up, it seems like all, it's like ships, when the water rises, all ships rise. And that's not 100% true across the board. But generally, when Bitcoin's doing good, everything else kind of goes good. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they say, well, yeah, but Bitcoin does first. And then there's the altcoin market and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, yeah, that's cool. Um, right now, I'm, I'm not actively trading because I'm too busy dealing with work stuff and age discrimination stuff and reporting stuff. And I just don't have the mental bandwidth for doing it all. But am I in the markets? Yeah, I am. Because when I saw... See this little thing happen? This is what? Let me, this, this is the weekly. Uh, this is this is the monthly. Let's go to weekly in the center one. And let's do the daily over here on the side. I saw I saw this happen. And and I popped in and started to bot. And it's been buying and selling, buying and selling while this is going on. Bots don't do as well as I do trading wise, but you know, I just keep my eyes on the charts and I wanted to partake of the opportunity. I also bought some Bitcoin when this happened and I was really, really upset with Kraken because they had this little buy now and I had funds in there and it's not a spot market when you do their buy thing. And they, not only did they charge me an outrageous fee, but they added a spread and I wrote and complained that I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere with it. I think I'm gonna report them. Uh, because because they're, they're, what I bought at was way above what the market was trading at on the spot market. And it was just stuff like predatory stuff like that just bothers me. So I always like to push back. I just haven't had time. I, I wrote a complaint, though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably stop using them. I'm going to migrate my accounts over to Coinbase or something. Not that Coinbase is probably any better, but you know what? When you burn me once and then you don't take care of me, I, unless I have to use you, I will go take my business elsewhere. And then I'll talk about it on a live stream or something. So stop screwing the customer is my message to all of any business anywhere in the world. Put the customer first, put their needs first. If you can't, if you have to take advantage of your customer in order to be in business, then you don't deserve to be in business. In my opinion, you're violating the golden rule. You're making our world a predatory place. And we're kind of, as a species are kind of sick of it. And uh, anyway, so I've, I'm opinionated. That's what this whole channel is about, how to think Pod 2 is about. Stop doing that.
we need to train a new batch of leaders. And if, if leaders can't learn how to lead with honor and integrity, then they need to go like sweep floors or something, or, or, or they need to just, you know, be unemployed and, and deal with, Oh, your six figure income. Oh, you don't get that in unemployment. You get 75% of minimum wage. Unless things have gotten better. Yeah. Yeah, well, until you actually need those safety nets, you don't realize that those safety nets aren't really a safety net. They are designed to put you into a struggle where if you struggle for very long, you basically lose everything. You can barely survive. And supposedly, you know, you suffering and being hungry and worrying about your kids. And that's supposedly going to give you incentive to keep working. I don't, I've never had an, needed an incentive to, to work, but apparently some people do. I just really think the whole system is bad. All right, there I am on a segue. All right, back to this stuff. Notice how this goes down to the bottom Boilinger band and a little bit below. Goes down to the low Boilinger band and below, right? This is the monthly. I'm going to change this back to the weekly because I'm going to set up the charts the way I normally see them. I normally see the... The weekly, the dailies in the center, and the 12 hour. It's the first charts I look at. If I'm on my cell phone, I, I walk through these charts, these timelines individually to see what's going on. So no, notice a couple of days ago, this went all the way down. Now, 3% standard deviation probably is about here. So it even went below that. This went down, this was unusual. So what what happened? Well, this this downward spike thing probably activated some bots, right? And was this end of year? No, this was the third that this happened. So I'm not sure what that was about. I think it might have been something to do with the U.S. government's EFT approval or rumors is what this was. But anyway, bots got activated at a certain point and it drove it down and other bots People like me that do what I call um, trap trading. Oh well, if it starts if it starts hitting here, I'm starting to buy automatically. Boom, 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 and then it, you know, that just stopped, and then it bounced back up. I mean, you know, if you don't have a lot of money and you're deathly afraid of uh, ever losing a trade or whatever, then just set a trap somewhere around 3% standard deviation on the daily. You'll be upside down for, I don't know, maybe five minutes, and then you'll be in massive profit. <laughs> I call it trap trading. Now, what happens if it just, well, we haven't had it in a long time, but... You know, let's say it just really dumps like it did back here, right? Well, you have to wait. Most people lay set like a 10% loss exit on the trade, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's probably smart because then you're out, you took a 10% loss, you wait for the bottom. But if you're waiting for the bottom, this bottom happened so fast, the odds are you're not going to get in it unless you set a trap in advance, a limit entry order. So, you know, I learned something from bots. Bots just buy it on a grid, right? Well, what I do if I'm trap trading and I don't have a lot of time is I'll go down. I'll just, I'll set my trap probably about uh, above the Boilinger band and then at the Boilinger band and then probably all the way down to the next psychological point, which in this case would have been 40,000. Oh, look, it went to 40,333, right? So it, it dipped past 40,500. Remember zero and five, zero and five, right? So it usually goes a little bit below the psychological point. So I would have probably trapped down to 39,000 because you never know, right? And I would have also probably started out with lower leverage and increased my leverage as it went down. Why? To pull the entry price down. And the lower it goes, the less risk there is. See, I view risk as a function of time, not leverage. And you have to understand leverage in order to use it properly, which is why I tell people, or if I'm training somebody, I train them at max leverage that they have available to them, which is usually 100 or 125x, or maybe as low as 50 or 75x, which is a ton of leverage. Uh, I think a lot of the exchanges, anything above 3x, they consider moderate risk. Anything above 5x leverage, they consider high risk. 
Well, why would I train somebody at 100x leverage? Well, for them to understand how leverage does and doesn't serve them. You know what's cool is outside the United States, you can learn these lessons with Ethereum for what's Ethereum running at right now? 22, $2,244. So for about 24 cents, but the cost of playing Miss Pac-Man when I was a teenager, a quarter, you could you could play with the with 0.01 ETH at 100x with with a entry and exit cost of about well entry and exit cost about two or three cents so be about about a quarter you can learn with a quarter and you can go spend fifteen hundred dollars or three thousand or six thousand or twelve thousand or fifteen thousand dollars on a how to trade course and you you work in a sand ba- sandbox doing demo trades and. And that has value, but I'd rather have you in a real market with real money, even if it's just a quarter. And that's a lot of quarters. How many? Qu- I don't have my calculator handy, but how, t- take fifteen hundred dollars. I, I think Ann Mako's new course is like three thousand dollars. That's a lot of quarters. The market will teach you everything you need to learn. The only thing I'm providing you is, is some basic points, because until you are actually make that first trade. Um, it, it's all Fugazi. It, 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 it's not real. And Diana and I learned this um, when we were, we were trying doing the sandbox training and we paid the money for the expensive training and stuff. And she, she's the one that said it out loud. She says, you know what? This isn't real. I don't have any money on the line. This isn't real. So she, I said, well, let, let's see what the smallest dollar amount is that we could trade with. It was like 0.01 ETH. At that time, it was like 12 cents. <laughs> so we switched to trading real money with lower dollar amounts. You can't do it in the United States, A, because as a U.S. citizen, you don't have access to leverage. To become wealthy, you need access to leverage, whether it be real estate or whatever, you need access to leverage. Other people's money, right? Well, guess what? When you're on an exchange and you have 100x leverage, you're using other people's money. It's the principle, right? We've all been taught it as U.S. citizens, but you don't have access to it unless you are a qualified investor above. In the crypto markets, that's having $10 million of liquid capital that you can prove. And even then, as a U.S. citizen, it's forbidden you. So go get your e-residencies. Uh, you need to make sure that if you go with an e-residency thing to get on some of the international exchanges, that it is a photo ID. Sorry, Estonia. Love you guys. Um, I am an Estonia E resident, but it was not effective for me wanting to trade because it doesn't come with a photo ID. Although it is the most advanced uh, identification verification process in the world, the exchanges haven't caught up with their level of technology. I mean, Estonia is an amazing country. So what are your other options? Well, there's probably 12 or 13 of them. I think a popular one is Palau. It's a U.S. Is it a U.S. protectorate? Anyway, they have some relationship with U.S., but they're like a, a Web3 tech thing, but they do a photo ID. And they do a background check, an international background check, make sure you're not a terrorist, all that sort of stuff. Make sure you're not on any watch lists. But even then, all except for Hong Kong exchanges require a residential address verification. It's a violation of your privacy and your rights to pursue happiness, in my opinion. and we are so broke as a species, we are, allowing, we are allowing global fascism to control you. Until you actually break the law and then you're not on a watch list, you should have the freedom to trade, invest, or do whatever you want with your hard-earned money that you've paid taxes on. If you want to invest in something out of South Korea, not part of the forbidden to do business with countries, then you should have the freedom to do it. We are indigenous to planet Earth. And I will keep saying that forever until we stop allowing this global control freak thing that keeps little people down. U.S. citizens have less freedoms right up there with North Koreans and Iranians and even Russian citizens. Why? Well, because apparently... You're not sophisticated. You are the most advanced culture in the world in terms of technology, but yet the citizenship apparently isn't advanced enough to use leverage. I don't think that's a good reason. In fact, without leverage, you can't become wealthy. 
the odds are so stacked against you without access to leverage, which means out to access to other people's money. Well, who's got the money? Already wealthy people. Who's got the control? Already wealthy people. <clears throat> and unless you come and beg them, then you don't have access. Crypto disrupted all of that. And guess what? They're putting the thumb screws to access. And but the rest of the free world has it, right? Has access to leverage. All right. So I got seg segued. So what do I do? I look at the next chart. I had a project called Homeless David One. I proved that a person with no money, no banking, all they needed was access to technology, could start with zero. Or actually, Homeless David One was like third sixty dollars, ideally ninety dollars. Um, but anyway, he was able to double his money without any losses, and all he did is he set traps on the hourly. And he got stuck in trades, but he wasn't allowed to do anything more than 3x of leverage, which you as a U.S. citizen do not have access to. But back then you could. And now these new KYC requirements, a homeless U.S. citizen who doesn't have a residential address can't even open an account. There's your freedom. Why we're, why we're not marching on Washington over the violation of our rights is unbelievable to me as a U.S. citizen. It's just wrong. It'll cost hundreds of millions of dollars to take it to the Supreme Court and fight it. And, and, and you know, but, but who, who, who needs to have that freedom? People who aren't, aren't already wealthy, that's who. Who doesn't have the money to take the court case? People who need it. It's, it's, we're trapped. And I don't know how long the residency loophole is going to work. We'll see. All right. So it's a, it's very, it's a, doing this hard and fast is a very narrow um, opportunity. Um, okay. Doing it inside of a Roth IRA where you don't have to deal with taxes is a smart move. The problem is, is your institutional accounts won't have access to leverage anymore because you just can't really do it. It's just wrong. Automated trading might work. You can make up with frequency what you don't have in leverage by scalping. But you need to be trading a, holo a highly volatile asset in order to make that work. As soon as you can get a secondary passport or, or actual uh, citizenship outside the U.S. that allows real freedom, costs about $250,000. All the wealthy people have got it. Totally legal, secondary passports, whole nine yards. Um, that's that's like the new American dream. Best of all word, worlds. You're safe in America because of the U.S. military, but if you are an American citizen, you, you actually trade your freedom um, for that. And it's just it's just bad. All right, so here, this is, I, these are all messed up. Oh, this is three hour. Wait a second. This is wrong. Why, why, what am I, what's, what's wrong with this? I think I'm supposed to have four here. No, it's not. Sorry, folks. I just, uh, I keep playing with the charts again. So this is supposed to be a six hour. This is the one hour. And here's 30 minutes. And I'll be wrapping this up. Notice hourly. See how it went down the lower Bollinger Band and went below and even a little bit further? This is the hourly. See how it followed it? Notice how, notice how it opened up and then it's gone sideways. I need to do a, a part two, right? Because when things go sideways, it's kind of like consolidation. Um, but this pattern, we saw this on the weekly the monthly, and the 12-hour, right? We saw the pattern. Well, this is the 6-hour, the 1-hour, 30-minute. We're seeing the same pattern. See, the time frames is a, is a frequency pattern, right? In these things, these different things are markets opening, markets closing, news, media, all sorts of stuff. It shows up in the charts. But there's a trend 
of movement. Even with bots, right? I could start a bot here and it's going to buy, 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 but it's going to be upside down. You have to get used to being upside down. But when it goes up here, it's going to start selling, 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 and it'll be back in some really nice profit up here. But if you really want to optimize that bot, you start on a dip just like you would on an entry. But with a bot, you don't have to wait for it to get all the way down. You know, you, you probably start the bot somewhere around here because sometimes it doesn't go all the way down, right? I like bots right now. I mean, that's my obsession. Because otherwise, it's really boring watching the charts. Or you have to get up during, like, the U.S. market opening, and usually then there's reasons for it, which, which causes down and or up spike within the first few hours of trading. But you, the basics are here. It's around the psychological points. Let's look at the hourly real quick. This is real time while I'm recording this. Bottom boil in Japan is 43, 43345-ish. But where is the real resistance level here? It's 43400, right? But it's really 435. Why? Because five and zero. Remember five and zero. So it's here. It's kind of interesting that it's right in the middle of the hourly. I find that interesting, right? What's at the top? We're at 44, just over 44. Interesting. And then I find that interesting. Zero and fives. Zero and fives. I mean, it's it's not every hour, right? But it's it's the support and resistance revolve around the hundreds and the thousands and the zeros and the fives, the hundreds, the thousands, the ten thousands, the zeros and the fives, the thousands, the ten thousands, the hundreds, the five hundreds, the zero and fives, zero and five. Psychology is what understanding how the psychology shows up in the charts will make you bank. I'm going to close on that note. Plus, I'm losing my voice. Okay, these the other charts over here, and I, I know this is blocking it, but this is a five-minute, three-minute, one-minute. Why do I look at the three-minute? I trade on the three-minute. Why? Because nobody else does. Everyone's looking at the one-minute. I've noticed a pattern in a lot of assets. It'll go down to the bottom boil in Japan, and it'll... it'll you know, meander its way up to the top oil and your band come back down on a on a probably about a 15 minute cycle if the market's moving fast. So I get in at the bottom oil and your band and and I get part of my trade out at the middle and the rest of it at the top. And I rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and make money out of thin air all day long, any day, even during a bear market. Down here, five second, 15 second. 15 minutes. What is this? Well, when I see the stuff bottoming out, I start looking here. I start seeing the market shift in the five second. It's confirmed in the 15 second. And then I usually make a decision. Sometimes it goes against me for a short period of time. That's when I'm actively trading. I'm the one making the decision, not a bot. I'm trying to program a bot on how to make that assessment. The problem is... <laughs> You don't have access to that data. And there's some slippage when you're doing APIs across different platforms. So anyway, it's another conversation. I hope this part one was interesting. And I'm going to just wrap up. Zero, five, ten. Zero and five, though. Psychology, psychology, psychology. How is the rest of the world and the bots looking at it? And if you're... Getting started, you're like a little speedboat. Wait for that daily to bottom out. Wait for that waterfall of red where everyone's screaming and it doesn't show up in the news till the next day, right? Wait for the waterfall. Patience is profit, right? All right. In fact, I'll end on some of those affirmations. I hope this has been helpful. I can't believe I'm losing my voice. I have to stop. I'm going I'm to uh, wrap up with my affirmations. All 
All right. Uh, <clears throat> if you're still here, let me explain some. LHF means low hanging fruit. This is psychology. This is part of how to think pot too. You have to excuse my voice. <clears throat> let me move the let me move the camera over here so I can see myself. Oh shoot, you can it's just a really bad setup. I didn't I'm just in a hurry today. It's because I'm wanting to talk to you about this stuff. LHF means low-hanging fruit. So if you're in fear and scarcity, and that's your lens with how you view the world, you want to eke out every little bit of profit. But your risk is time in the market. So with experience, you'll learn to stay in. I'll, I'll admit it. I'll confess. I'll sometimes stay in markets longer than I, than I should because I see what's going to happen next. And it makes a difference between like a 33% ROI and a 600% ROI on a trade. But that's when the market's in a bull run. We're kind of... Everyone in the world is waiting on the United States to get back in the game, right? So that big commercial money can flood in and all right. <clears throat> but once that floodgate opens, a dog with a note in its mouth just says, buy, will make money if they're patient. But if you're afraid, every time the market dips a little bit because people take profits, you'll jump out at a loss. And all you had to do is just wait another five minutes. Or sometimes that five minutes turns into five months. Been there, done that. Not fun. And then there's ways of managing a trade, and that's more advanced stuff. But low-hanging fruit. It's, it's usually getting out in the timeline at the middle Boilinger band. That's the low-hanging fruit. And what I do is I do a staged exit. I'll set exits at the 50% or 75% just before the middle boil in Japan if I really want to get out. And I'll set the remainder out or maybe all of it except for maybe 5% because sometimes things just take off, especially in a bull run. But right, you know, but these are strategies you play with. You know, there's dips at the beginning of the market week, which is like Sunday, Monday. So I might start trading, but stay in throughout the week and just get in and out, get in and out, get in and out. And I'll get out Saturday night, which is the last rally of the week and close out all my positions. Kind of like a day trader, but doing it during the week. I don't mind being upside down. I know how to manage my leverage. I know how to manage my risk. I know when to pull the ripcord and get out. And I know how to manage if I'm stuck. I know what to do there. So that's all I got for today, everybody. Sorry about losing the voice. I don't know what that's about. Um, and I hope this information has been helpful. Um, and shout out to Cindy. Hope this was uh, helped revisit things that um, uh, I'm really about keeping it simple. The reason why I keep I'm looking over here is because that's where I see my face and I should be looking here. Um, a lot of what makes you win or lose is the psychology. And if you've been burned in the market where you've had a liquidation, you become sensitive. And But really, you need to learn what you could have done differently to protect yourself, but not be afraid to take the risk. Anyway, there's ways of managing risk and stuff when you get into the math of it and stuff. And I got spreadsheets uh, that I think I'm the only person that uses my spreadsheets, but they're available to the Patreon subscribers, the ones I'm currently using and stuff, how I assess risk. I got a plan for winning the lottery. That spreadsheet's available there too. It's like five bucks a month. It's it's the best value in the world. Is it totally up to date? It, it doesn't need to be revised. It, it, it I got to point in the spreadsheet development. I can't, I can shuffle things around to make it look a little different, to, but is it really more effective? The only thing that has happened in my spreadsheets in the last two years is I found some minor logic errors that had nothing to do with the results, but I fixed them. Thank you, Donna. Anyway, so that's, that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.